Hello everyone and welcome to episode 26. Uh, it's uh, it's been an year actually. Well, we've been doing this uh, podcast for uh, uh, a year and I and Kumaran started this as an experiment and uh, we are still doing it one year. Uh, we may have missed maybe sometime in December once, but I think 26 episodes means 52 weeks. So uh, we, we've been doing long enough and thank you for all who have been subscribing to our podcast. And if you don't know how to pod, uh, subscribe, just go to etiunplugged.in slash subscribe. I, there are various ways you can subscribe. We have uh, we are on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, on YouTube. And uh, if you don't have any of those things, you can have an RSS feed or just go to a website and see the latest episode. So that is how, uh, thank you very much for doing that. Uh, today's uh, topic we have is what have enterprises learned in the last six months of COVID? And to do that, we have uh, our favorite guest, Kumaran, who is the chief mentor and uh, CTO for Tiny Magic. And we have uh, Gaurav Agarwal, who is, uh, uh, who is the global lead for cloud transformation and digital transfer- transformation at Avanard. Uh, welcome, Gaurav. Thanks, Deepak, for, for hosting me or giving me opportunity to contribute and learn. So, yes, that's what we do here, actually. So this is what we do in this podcast. We try and uh, uh, discuss things which are impacting the enterprise technology. Uh, we are looking mostly at the India market, but what we are looking at is how we can learn from from the world over and, and apply it in, in, in various uh, situations. Gautam is that. also there. Hey, hey, Gotham. Go- Gotham is on uh, mute, I guess. He t- decided to switch off his video, I guess. So I thought he was not there. So Gotham is a is an architect with Raymond's and he's uh, probably planning to move to a new role. And, uh, um, and, uh, yeah, I'm live audio. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we will we'll use your picture. Don't worry about it. So, so we'll look at that. So, so starting with you, Gaurav, in, in the last six months, I, I know a lot of things have changed in the, in the enterprise world. What are the things which have come top of your mind when you think about that this did not used to happen in my space, in my enterprise six months ago? This is now the norm. What are the things which you have learned over the, the last six months? I think for, for me, the biggest learning that happened is respect to acceptability that customer has now to challenge themselves on their assumptions. The most important which has good and bad impact on our business is how customers have changed where they are willing to accept more offshore Mm -hmm. as compared to onshore. I'll give you an example. If like this is this is a change which happened in in enterprises. If to, earlier we would have gone to a customer and said we want to do 70 30 70 percent offshore 30 percent onshore, and expect a customer to accept something like that, or maybe you know say if you want to reduce a price, we can do, do look at model of 80 20. Mm-hmm. In last six months, probably almost every customer told us, why don't you look at 90-10? Because anyway, I'm not getting my employees to come to office. So what is onshore? Hmm. Why don't you shift every damn thing to offshore and, and deliver the project? Okay. So, so that's, that's like challenging, challenging the customer by saying it's no more about 60, 40, 70, 30, 90, 10 is also feasible. Right. And even, even the offshore is actually working from home right now. So, so that might be a... Um... And, and that's, that's, that's the other change, the other thing that has changed, okay? As in a lot of customers in, would look at, you know, when, whenever they looked at offshoring the things by saying, I need a secure bay. It doesn't matter you have a large campus, but within that floor, I want this half a floor or a particular cubicle on a separate network 
with a separate physical entry card <laughs> mm-hmm. and things like that. The, the day everybody started going in lockdown, that assumption started going for tasks. Customer said, I don't care about private base, private network, blah, blah, blah. Till the time they can authenticate using my Active Directory or my credential, I'm fine. Just And if you could provide me a secured VPN kind of a thing, mm-hmm. I'm fine. Or, or the best thing that we saw is forget about authenticating with their AD. They said, you're a trusted partner with us. If they're able to authenticate with your identity mm-hmm. in your network, and then I trust you. Mm-hmm. So look at, you know, it's like earlier we were saying it's going to increase your cost because you want a secured bay and things like that. Mm-hmm. Versus now customer is saying, forget about all that because I can't create a secured bay at home. Mm-hmm. Continue delivering my work or my business process. And I'm going to trust the authentication that we do with our active director. So, so a change, you know, wherein that perception of what is secure has changed. Mm-hmm. So people are redefining how, how they think their systems or their delivery is being secured. I think that that's a, that's a very, very interesting point that you mentioned that the things which used to matter six months ago don't matter anymore. Uh, or at least they have stopped making sense to people. It says, okay, when we could, this is nothing physically actually changed in that sense that the security did not just over six months improve suddenly. The, all the technologies which we are using today still existed even six months ago, right? So, so this, you think this is related to, this is uh, just a crisis response. Will, they, will, they go, will the enterprises go back to being this way after, uh, let's say the vaccine is more prevalent in six months time or one year's time, they will go back to the 70, 70 30 and other asks like, individual base and things like that? I can share share what what we are seeing. Mm-hmm. Is one, I don't think customers are going to turn back. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to stay what it is. Mm-hmm. They might start adding few more things mm-hmm. by saying, okay, in a crisis time, we want it to be up and running but let's now start making it secure in the current model. Mm -hmm. So it's like earlier, it was about everybody comes to the campus and then you are securing it. Mm -hmm. Now it has gone more distributed. Mm -hmm. Let's secure the distributed environment. But I don't think, at least in our business, that people would start coming back to normal by saying, let's come back to office. Let's come back to that 70, 30. Mm -hmm. And... Yeah, I think this this is this this is defining the new normal, which okay. which I'm sure you you heard that. We we would start looking at what that new normal would be. Yeah. So I I don't think people are going to turn back. I, I think it's kind of uh, so in another conversation, right? One favorite phrase or concept that me and Deepak use is something called a Lindy effect. Yeah. Okay. So it's. Uh, so Lindy effect, basically it's, it's, I, I don't remember exactly, was it in psychology or economy somewhere? It was like in one field, uh, where was it in which domain was the research? So I, I read it uh, from Nassim Taleb, right? So he's, oh, he's Taleb. Okay. yeah, so he, he's a general, general thinker, I would say. <laughs> so basically that thing is concept is, it says that if a concept or a system or a process has been alive for let's say X amount of time, there is a very good probability that it will be alive for another X point of time compared to something new coming in. That's a general thing. Like if something has been alive for thousand years, there's a very good chance that it will be alive for at least another 700 or 800 years. Okay. That's a general study. So there are things that when we do this change, it's interesting to make a note for Lindy effect. But so that's a doubt that I have for what you're telling, right? Whatever changes in it, will it stick or change? Yeah. See, 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 some of that is also a function of for foreseeable future, what is going to be the priority for business? Uh-huh. Would it going to be how they take care of some of these peripheral things, which helps them in branding? 
versus there are much higher things that they could do for their branding. See, right now, for a CEO, it is more important to sustain the business than growing the business. If somebody mm. can sustain, then only you can think about growing. Growing, okay. In that mode, you are least concerned about some of the peripheral things. You want to keep your business going. So you would leave the things which are not bringing value to the business. And you would probably safeguard things using the legal contracts as compared to saying, let me make it foolproof. Mm. So when, when in our business, people said they are fine if they are authenticating with us, but that happened because in our legal terms, we went ahead and said, this is how our authentication or our network is itself is secure. So you could trust us. Okay. And other thing which is happening is some of this also is also a function of how technology is changing or, or has evolved. If today, if let's say something like COVID would have happened 10 years back in India. Yeah, we would be finished. Correct. How would how would have people work from home? Services would have been disrupted. That point of time, customer would have looked at different options, maybe shift to locations where they could work remotely. True. So sometimes how the technology has evolved is helping. Other other thing is everybody now is going after saying, I have to grow the business. If they have to retain their current employees or talent, irrespective of what businesses they are in, they really need to provide them flexibility, which, which is going to change all their processes. It's like changing, giving, giving a flexibility, the, the example that we were discussing, 40 hours to, to something is like burn it in four days. Mm. How, how do you how do you pay an uh, employee then? You have to change some of your payroll systems and things like that. So there are there's so many other things that customer would have to worry instead of saying, let me come back to the pre-COVID time frame. <laughs> okay. So uh, is, I'm saying there is friction, sufficient friction in the system right now, which would stop customers in asking, let's do what it was before COVID. Mm there are sufficient opportunities and few more things that they can use to grow their business instead of trying to bring back the normal. So sometimes the friction itself is going to stop them going back to the, the previous normal. That's good. That's an interesting point. So they, you're telling there is things which is stops you from going back and there are benefits also that's coming. So that can uh, help. I think when you just said, right, the technology has changed. I just experienced something just before we got into this call. My daughter, she was actually leaving house with a mask and a bag in her hand. And uh, she actually has, she finished her college and she just works for an org called Teach for India. So she is associated with a government school here in Chennai near our house. And uh, she's assigned two classes and of the classes around uh, close to uh, out of batch of around 60 kids 15 to 20 of them are attending remote classes okay now teach for india what it has done is for another set of 10 kids who are willing they are actually giving them small tabs so she was actually went and got it day before yesterday installed zoom whatsapp on that Okay, and they are giving it to the kids and they just have to make one small agreement telling that if this breaks, you have to pay 1500 So we, when you're talking government schools, you're talking about people below yeah. poverty line or close to poverty line, right? So there's a 1500 rupees they have to pay if the laptop of the tab is completely unusably broken. Okay, and... Uh, there are a lot of interesting things I learned out of that. So they said, so she said, uh, how do you give data? Do you buy the SIM card? So they said, no, we don't buy the SIM card. We'll ask the parents to buy it. I said, that will be a big problem. At least for me, getting another SIM card is like going, giving proof is a pain. But she said, for them, it is very simple. 
they keep changing sim card every two months they'll say that sim card didn't work they'll go buy another <laughs> sim card they want to customer support and all <laughs> and then i realized at that strata for them following up with customer support is much more painful than buying a new sim card and telling three other people take this new number and call me yeah. the dynamics is so different right and if i would think i will think uh, you could, i have to make the customer support but at their level you actually give them a new sim card that's a better troubleshooting mechanism <laughs> but anyway i think it just reinforce like so at least for them and i'm actually super impressed with teach for india like uh, technically as gaurav said 10 years back the schools would have completely stopped now at least they have 15 to 20 kids who are coming and doing these two hour classes and the government has also changed processes previously it was open now they have said that uh, kids are having zoom fatigue and at least chen uh, tamil nadu government has said you cannot have more than um, i think it's some one hour of online classes per day so mm. that's its governments are also changing their policies yeah. edu- education policies that that is that is very interesting karo you are saying something yeah and then that's where you know, it's like a lot of this behavior change is going to cause a lot of policy change whether it is enterprise or government um it would it would challenge some of some of the definitions of how people look at visa so so it's like you know other change that that i've seen that that's that's the reason why i was probably trying to get that point across the other change that i've seen is people now are willing to close the deals much faster oh wow mm-hmm. yeah earlier the procurement department would have taken huge amount of in person meeting one hour meeting definitely will run for 3 hours and things like that now in in a remote world people are people are willing to close deals faster and they are happy to take the standard terms and condition as come to saying let's customize let's customize what is causing that change guru because of the sense of the that customers are seeing now the earlier if somebody told it department that your budget is cut by 30% the first reaction of cio was let me fight in the system that instead of 30% reduction let's make it a 20% reduction and they never deliver 20% reduction they over consume okay. but now the acceptability that 30% budget cut means 30% budget cut is there so that sense of urgency to take action is there mm. which is causing the process to run much more faster by saying mm. let's let's not squeeze on pricing let's not kill the cycle let's let's get started and we will we'll figure it out and but that is happening where customer is expecting a relationship at a different level so if and and if you look at in any b2b relationship people people close deals based on based on their relationship sure and so so now number of deals they where we see are ceos interacting before you sign a deal so that 15 day or 30 day tnc process can be squeezed to 2 days wow. come to the standard terms and condition get one level higher or two level higher person on both side to talk and say are you committed are you committed okay okay yeah. so so the relationship was two levels below but all of a sudden two levels high people are just having this high hello conversation and say are you committed and the below process goes smoothly so you would start seeing a lot of lot of deal closing or or business bidding processes going for change 
and and that's at least in last three months I've started seeing that. I would not say this is what I've seen six months back, but at least in last two months that that's something that has started emerging, especially in in North America and Europe side. I haven't seen that yet in Asia, okay. but but in North America and Europe side, we we started seeing something like this. Nice. As you're talking, right? I just realized, let as uh, Tiny Magic as a company. it has definitely helped us whatever you are telling right i see those things uh, from two perspectives one uh, let me just take how we deliver right so usually our standard mode of delivery is a two day in person 16 hour boot camp followed by a four month thing <coughs> now one thing that even within our own minds same like your storytelling right me and sukumar were kind of stuck telling that um i need at least 16 hours of time to engage people to get them into this new mind flow and get them thinking but now after this uh, in the 6 months we are 90% confident that four or three four hour slots which is basically a 12 hour boot camp right spread across three days four hours each can deliver the it can actually deliver a better impact than a 16 hour in person impact so that tweak to the model itself it has forced us to do and we are actually happy with it because now what has happened is it has made it easier for people also to come to our program previously i want and we are talking about senior guys right asking two full days of lockdown into a workshop there is huge resistance to people coming to the program now you compare to it if i say 3 4 hours i am significantly reduce the resistance to people coming into the program so the stakeholder involvement has become easier the this is from our side right as a person provider itself from a consumer perspective previously lot of uh, stakeholders were also in the mindset that if you don't get people in into that room we don't put them into that hotel we don't have that circular table they won't have a mindset of learning and all these online things won't work maybe for some small chuttu training it is okay but for strategic leadership kind of a thinking this will not work out now they have also kind of got shifted in that perspective so it's and uh, because of that the other thing is like let's say i had to do it for a large company in india which has like five cent development centers in india to do this boot camp i had to make people travel from five cities into one just that coordination activity right booking tickets when they are free how they will come itself will be a three week activity now close the deal on monday thursday or wednesday the program will start because all people have to do is accept a schedule in which so within one week the program gets kicked off all that let me check for free timing so that's i think it's kind of i'm telling um gaurav was whatever is telling is that both from the provider perspective it's forced me to think differently and the consumers are also much more open and it has reduced their problem also so that's a change which i'm definitely seeing and uh, good news is i guess uh we thought we will not be closing deals but it's actually a little more easier to close deals now that, that actually that is a very interesting uh, side effect i would say because now like gorov mentioned that this is increasing the sense of urgency right that uh i, I do not know whether this is a psychological urgency or this is a real urgency right means one is the budget constraints and things like that which obviously are are, are the the real factor to it but is there uh, some psychological effect of this this covid 19 which is increasing that urgency okay i'll make one quick uh, comment this <laughs> completely off tangent okay more philosophical or spiritual mm. there is actually no urgency in life <laughs> it is all psychological and man made only <laughs> <laughs> there is really no urgency in life at all for anything <laughs> or maybe very few things have got an urgency the urgency <laughs> is only when physically things stop right you don't get food there is urgency you don't get air there is urgency <laughs> right Correct. but but uh, means but budget is like food and air so <laughs> so i got to comment on myself that. making that comment that was off this <laughs> realm but gorup <laughs>
Garo, you're saying something. See, I would, I would agree that if, as a human impact, if everybody can be in that mode that there is no urgency, that there is nothing like it. But unfortunately, we don't live in ideal world where yeah. majority of the people can say there is no urgency. And and this urgency, I would say, see, some of that I'm sure is accelerated because how people are handling the pressure of this urgency. But urgency is there. Urgency is there to safeguard your business, safeguard your corporate. Mm. Urgency is there to capture the new opportunities. Okay. So what is happening is because every every business transaction shape and form is changing. So every everybody is thinking about how they can be ready to capture the opportunity that they see in post COVID world. So for some of the businesses, it is about a COVID has given me a, a level playing field where it doesn't matter how many times in the past I have missed the bus. Mm. Whether I miss the bus or not, every competitor of mine is sitting at the same playing field. So urgency is to be the winner in this race now. So one, save the business, plus be ready to capture the business when scenarios are better. So everybody is willing to invest in catching up in that process and say, can I be a better place to capture the new opportunities? And if you need to capture the new opportunities, mm -hmm. you need to act fast now, do something, because reality is, if you will do 10 projects, only two are going to succeed, or three will succeed. So let me shorten and get rid of the all the fluff that happens. Let me start. So that urgency is more about, let me start with the actual work much faster so that I am prepared to capture the opportunity that comes whenever market starts reviving. And when you say leveling field, right, one thing which I could probably relate to is uh, the infrastructure that we had, or I had an on-site client presence I had. So uh, established players will already have, let's say, an office in Seattle if you have to pitch an opportunity with Microsoft. But today, now it doesn't matter. You will sit in Redmond Center, do a Zoom call. I will sit in Chennai and do a Zoom call. Yes, yeah, so, so, so that's, that's, that's a level playing field. doesn't matter where, whether, whether it was a two... It, it, it's a a low price system integrator in our business like TCS or Wipro versus high price point like Capgemini or Accenture or any anybody else. All of them are, are back to square one. <laughs> mm -hmm. What are the other things which levels so, the play? So let's say a classic example is let's if, if you look at two big giants, whether it is Amazon retail or Walmart. For both of them, the definition of post-COVID world is going to look like same, but who is better placed? Fine, Amazon retail had a little bit upper hand because they were already a little bit more agile, but mm. Amazon retail also saw the same setback in the business. Their employees also got affected with COVID. So for, for somebody like Walmart, here is an opportunity to catch up because Amazon retail also has to go and change everything Walmart, even if they didn't had, they have to create something new. Uh, Somebody is okay. trying to fix it. Somebody has to create it. So it's it's giving them a little bit better level playing field. <laughs> and I can, it's, I can, it's like wiping off the board and then say, let's start counting again. <laughs> no okay. wonder why, why the uh, Walmart's purchase of Flipkart is paying back now. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, that's what I'm saying. That fine, you know, it's like Walmart missed the bus when when Amazon got into that business. But mm. COVID has given them an opportunity to catch up. That's now, yeah. whosoever is taking the actions faster now is going to be better placed. So, so let, let's talk to Gotham also. Let's talk to Gotham and find out what he is, what he has learned in the last six months. Gotham, you want to share something uh, yeah. from the, because you are in a uh, different industry. Uh, 
uh, and different challenges you are facing. So what is it that you have learned? Uh, what I have seen, at least in the last six months, is uh, a lot of options have become a necessity now, right? So a lot of things were there earlier, but uh, there was no much focus on them. But uh, they were always kept as an option. We always keep it in our back pocket and say, okay, we can work on it later, right? So uh, maybe there was a lot of uh, redundant applications in our system. We wanted to clean it up. But at that point of time, our focus was all on uh, uh, our key business priorities at that point of time. But uh, somehow, uh, during this last six months, we somehow invented time within the 24 hours. We had the same uh, 24 hours. And still, we somehow squeezed a lot and tried to uh, cut the redundant flaps. So that, that kind of uh, reduced the cost also, right? Like uh, you were also saying it, right? Uh, like uh, Garo was telling it, the CAOs always have this uh, 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 option of cutting the cost by 20%, but they always come up with an extra additional cost and they say that, hey, I need more money. But now this has become a uh, necessity for us that, okay, you have to cut costs, somehow uh, uh, run pillar to post, but you have to cut the cost. That's the only thing that have, we have been given. And we have the same uh, uh, 24 hours in a day, but still we uh, somehow crunched a lot, worked in parallel, but still we cut the uh, cost in a lot of uh, things, right? And and the same way, uh, there were a lot of technologies also in retail stores, which were also an option, like, okay, omni-channel, uh, buy online, pick up in store, or uh, uh, click and collect, and all these things were options earlier. But now uh, e-commerce has become a mandatory or a, 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 for your brand to be present online has become a necessity, right? And uh, that which uh, even uh, the uh, e-commerce, bigger, larger e-commerce players are uh, seeing that uh, this as an opportunity. Now, you could have seen the yesterday's news also, right? Uh, Flipkart has invested uh, uh, on uh, Aditya Birla, right? So, so that's how the brands are also evol evolving from a traditional brick and mortar to a, a kind of a, a digital presence they wanted to have. So that's what is happening at least in our uh, uh, industry now. So you're saying that the digital transformation which would have taken years to happen is now happened in yeah. the last six months. Yeah, so there is this famous joke also going online, right? So who made the digital transformation <laughs> for your company? <laughs> yeah. Is it your CEO, CIO, CDO or COVID? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That, that is true. That is very well. Uh, actually, that is the truth, actually. COVID has uh, taught us a lot and uh, a lot on digital transformation are happening. We can see that, yes. Right. So Kumar, I was just looking at all our episodes since we started, right? So the first time we talked about this coronavirus was in episode eight. Right? Oh, wow. Right. Okay. And we have had at least uh, three or four other episodes where we talked about the impact and, and, and <clears throat> there are a lot of things which we discussed in the past, right? Where uh, we have, we were thinking that this would happen and and those things actually have happened now, right? So we're saying the people will just shut down their offices and then start working from home forever. And that has actually happened now. A lot of companies are saying that you don't ever have to come to the office. So, so those things have actually transpired now. So, so <laughs> anything else you want to add, Kumar, before we end today's uh, discussion? I think it's, it's all, uh, there's two ways. Uh, it's good. I think uh, it. I think that constraint kind of gets us to be more innovative and more uh, efficient. And I, th I think that's a good thing. And we should make the best out of it. Right. So I, I think, and as, as Gautam mentioned, as Gaurav mentioned, uh, this, this is, I would say, this is COVID-19, the quickening means everything is happening faster, right? The things which were, were taking a backseat now, they're happening faster in the enterprise IT world, especially. Right. So I would just say COVID-19, the quickening is, a, is, the, is the title of the show because everything is happen, happening faster. Right. So thank you, everyone, for today's discussion. Thank you, Gaurav. Uh, thank you, Gautam. Thank you, Kumaran. Uh, and uh, this has been a great one year of uh, producing this show. And uh, we continue to hope that you uh, continue to listen and subscribe to our channel and share it with all your uh, 
people who you think will benefit out of these discussions. And our intention was always to make it an open-ended discussion and not to give you quote unquote gyan, but to share our uh, experiences and, and uh, uh, make it an enlightening discussion for you. And we don't want you to spend time just looking at a screen. So we give you an audio format so you can listen to it while you are walking your dog or just going to the gym and just have this conversation running in your back, back end and uh, learn something out of it from our experiencing. And if you want to come to our podcast and share something which you are doing in the enterprise IT, you are welcome. Please reach out to us. We are on LinkedIn and we are on Facebook. We will always be happy to invite you on our show and have a good discussion with you. Thank you, everyone, and see you next time.